Well, let me start off with saying it's a little less nerve-wracking year two uh, than, it, than it was year one uh, walking up here, but I'm going to uh, steal from a, a coach that I actually uh, heard speak on media day just recently, and I'm going to say that this is more year one than, uh, than year two. Last year was more year zero than year one uh, because of the late start uh, in January when we got started. But um, let me start off by uh, saying how absolutely humbled and blessed I am to be standing in front of you today. This is just a phenomenal opportunity, again, um, to get Fort Lewis College out on the map and, and really talk about our program, our kids, uh, and what a, what a great job our coaches are doing down there. Uh, let me also uh, take the opportunity to thank my wife. She's at home right now um, with our, our newborn, uh, four weeks old. So uh, she's uh, actually putting in all the real hard work right now at home um, with the new one. Uh, also want to thank our president, Dean K. Thomas. And last year I stu stood up in front of everybody and I said, hey, well, I hadn't even had my first meeting with the, with the new president, my new boss, and that was kind of interesting because the old, the old president had given me the job, and, um, and since I've, she's been there the last 12 months, she's been outstanding, and uh, she really has been a supporter. She's a true fan. Uh, you'll hear, hear her see her yelling, and, and she's about yay tall, and yay big, and uh, see her at the ball games yelling and screaming, uh, just like one of the fans, just like any of the parents out there. So it's outstanding to have um, her support. And to former uh, athletic director Kelly Higgins, uh, thank you very much for the opportunity. Uh, we're really excited about uh, what we're bringing out here. Thank you again to all the friends, family, and alumni, uh, and fans of our program. They've been outstanding this first year. It's, uh, I know they've kind of gone through their turbulent times with the program, uh, but uh, with all their uh, love, support, and, and, uh, and kind words, this has been a great opportunity for us. Obviously, we look down there, we've got picked eighth in the conference, so it's kind of interesting to follow Colorado School of Mines and, uh, and Pueblo up here. We love a challenge, and uh, I, I tell our guys all the time, uh, you get what you deserve, and, and I think this is right where we finished off last year. We were three and six in the conference. We had two more wins uh, in the conference than the previous, I think, three or four years, uh, but that's not good enough, and our expectations are extremely high, and I think everybody knows that when we played uh, when we played last year, we were up in eight out of our nine conference games uh, to start the game, but we just really didn't finish, and that's what we're really concentrating on now. Uh, if our kids want more respect, they have to they have to earn it. And right now, they're spending the time during the summer. They spent the time in the winter during spring football in the classroom, on and off the field, uh, to really breed a championship culture um, there at Fort Lewis College, and, and that's what we're all about right now. So. Um, let me see. Our expectations are high. Um, our summer commitment pr uh, program has been outstanding, and it'll continue to grow over the next uh, few years. Uh, every year that we're here, we just keep on looking to be bit bigger and better. I know John just spoke about um, wanting to finish um, number one, and that's our goal as well. We want to make sure that we represent the RMAC uh, in a positive way on and off the field and make sure that we bring the level of play up in this conference overall. Uh, it's you know, sad to see Carney go because, again, they bring um, such a great uh, level of competition on the football field, both from a conference standpoint and from a national standpoint. And that's what we're trying to do here. So um, sad to see you guys go, Daryl. Uh, again, my fond t memories out, out in Carney myself. Uh, I have a lot of respect for that football program. Uh, now let's see. Let's talk a little bit more about our program. We have a whole whopping eight seniors in the program right now, eight of them. So we're going to be a young football team for a while, fellas, and we're going to be we're going to be around here for a little bit. But it's great to see those young freshmen coming and competing. Coach Romano brought that up. The best players play. So we had a ton of young freshmen come into the program last year and play as true freshmen. We have uh, a lot of experience at that last season. We didn't know who those faces would be, um, but we return roughly about seven starters on offense and and eight on defense, but I don't know if they're actually going to be the starters again this year because we're bringing in a whole crop load of new freshmen, great talent that I think are going to walk on campus day one and, and uh, battle for starting positions. That's the way we recruited them with the opportunity to play sooner. Um, and if, if they're the better football players, then there's no doubt that they're going to get on the football field. And it's going to happen like that. We're going to be a young football team for the next two or three years because every year we're going to bring in bigger and better freshmen, and they're going to keep on beating out the guys that are currently in the program, and our guys know that. Uh, our guys know that that's what they're up against. And sooner or later, those sophomores and juniors will get the idea. They'll get the picture. Hey, you know what? I, this is what i got to do to hold on to my starting spot. And, and every, uh, sooner or later, we'll have an older team. But until that happens, we're going to have an extremely young team for probably the next couple of years at least. Uh, I did bring two 
gentleman with me from the offensive side of the football, uh, Tim Jenkins, our returning quarterback. He was a second team all conference player. And for a team uh, where we went three and six in the conference last year, to come in second uh, at, at, in the voting for all conference between behind Clay Garcia, who was obviously a Harlan Hill finalist, um, is quite an accomplishment for a true sophomore. So uh, Tim Jenkins uh, really embodies what we're looking for uh, from a student athlete at Fort Lewis College, from being competitive on and off the field, a great role model um, in the community and on the team. But he knows full well that we've brought in a couple young freshman quarterbacks that he's going to have to battle his rear end off to hold on to that starting job. He's been a starting quarterback for the last two years. He has all-conference accolades. He split um, co-offensive player of the year f uh, his freshman season uh, with, uh, with your guy over there down at, at Adams, Marty. And, but that, you know what? That doesn't mean that he is locked into that starting position. We were 3-6 and six last year in the conference. There is no job um, that is a lock. Esteban Lucero is a right guard for us, number 73. He's uh, our, actually our only senior at offensive line. Uh, he's going to be locking it down at right guard. He's probably our most consistent offensive lineman coming out of spring football. Really looking forward to seeing how our offensive line really projects. We brought in um, a junior college transfer to, uh, but mostly just freshmen at that, at that offensive line position. So uh, we'll see how we grow, how quickly we can put that group together. We do have a couple returning starters from that group, but again, it's going to be very challenging to hold off some of these young kids because uh, they do come in and they, they definitely pass the eyeball test, but we'll see how fast they, they can actually put the schemes together on the field. Let's see, on defense, um, and, and, I'll, and I'll touch on a couple other positions here in a second, but on defense, uh, we weren't really good. I'll just be real honest. We, we gave up a whole le heck of a lot of points in the second half of ball games last year, and we gave up a lot of yards. That wasn't a big secret. And you could just open up uh, any record book, and you'll be able to tell that from 2010 season. But one thing that we were was very young. We were very young. We had three starting freshmen in the secondary at one point in time, uh, starting sophomore. Uh, we didn't have anybody uh, that at our defensive line um, that uh, was an upperclassman. So we returned all four guys at defensive line. But then through recruiting, we also brought in a whole new stable of young guys at the defensive line. So uh, those four returners at, at defensive line, they might all be out of a job here in about a month. So uh, we'll, it'll be fun to see. At least I know that we'll have um, some depth at that position. Uh, at linebacker, uh, we graduated one, uh, one senior. And we'll be returning. And I, they're a fun group. Our linebacking core is a real fun group. Uh, they weren't any good last year because they were all young kids running around out there. But they're going to be making some leaps and strides into this season. Uh, I really like them a lot because of all the hard work they put in. They really took some lumps as a freshman group last year. And we either redshirted them or they played as true freshmen um, last year. So they'll either be true sophomores or redshirt freshmen coming into the season. And we're excited about them. They run around. They play with the energy and the enthusiasm that we're really looking for. Um, over at the fort. In the secondary, uh, Jamal Campbell um, would be a young man that I I'd keep an eye on. He's a true sophomore. He actually uh, won the starting position, was a, one of our true starting freshmen in the secondary last year. Uh, Tim uh, Mahavich uh, is a fre uh, excuse me, was a sophomore last year in our secondary. But really the one, we kind of call him, the, I call him like the grandfather out there, he's only a junior, is Phil Odell. He was the fourth leading tackler in the conference last year. Because we didn't have a lot of success on defense, I understand he didn't get a lot of accolades last year. But really for us, he's uh, from a work ethic standpoint, he's definitely a model uh, of what we would like our defensive players to turn out to be. Again, a very productive, still a young guy, was a sophomore last year, will be a junior this year. Um, but uh, it definitely what we're looking for in the future here. Now, uh, as far as uh, the rest of our offense goes, we have uh, a little bit of a change here. I know Fort Lewis College has been known for the spread offense and four and five wides and slinging it 90% of the time and having maybe one or two running plays, and that's about it. We're going to change, and that's changing through recruiting. So um, I think that will actually segue myself into talking about special teams because we struggled on special teams a lot last year due to a lot of lack of depth. Uh, it's really tough to ask, uh, and all you guys know what I'm talking about, having all those little skilled receivers running around trying to make tackles on kickoff cover uh, and punt coverage is a, is a little tough. So this year recruiting fullbacks and tight ends into our program, really diversifying our offense, uh, making it multiple, uh, will add to not only our offensive production, I'm hoping, uh, but also to our special team production as well. So that's kind of what we're looking at. Uh, Frank Atherton, our punter, was a real bright spot on special teams last year. Uh, we have, uh, I think, probably the best punters in the country in our conference because, I, if I'm not mistaken, Frank was uh, 
fourth or fifth in the conference in punting, but he, he was in the top 20 in the country in punting all at the same time. So we had some pretty special punters. I don't think he even sniffed off all conference because uh, we are, the punters in our conference are outstanding. So, um, But he was a real bright spot. Uh, good, funny story about Frank. He, he hadn't punted in a real football game probably in about three or four years. And, um, he was about as nervous as I was walking into Montana State game one last year. And we walked out of the locker room, true story, we were walking out of the locker room and, and, and I, hey, Frank, how you doing? And, and he just, I'm doing fine. You know, I, I don't even think he said that. I think he just kind of nodded his head. And the reason why he, I don't think he spoke is because he was biting onto his uh, mouthpiece so tight. I'm kidding you not, it's about an hour and a half before kickoff. And he's got his mouthpiece in his mouth. He's going through stretching lines. He's got his mouthpiece in his mouth. He's going through warm-ups, everything else. He's got his mouthpiece in his mouth. I don't think he, the son of a gun took out his mouthpiece for about seven hours that day because he was so nervous, hadn't kicked the football, did a great job, averaged over 40 that, uh, that game, and uh, had a real productive season. But we got some great kids, really excited, and um, that's where we're at right now. Questions for Coach? Don't everybody jump up at the same time. <laughs> Uh, Coach, you opened the season against South Dakota Tech in Durango. How important is it to start off the season with a win? Geez, I, I, it's, it's great to start off week one, two through ten with a win. Uh, I, I think that our kids right now have worked tremendously hard to get them to the position to be um, in a spot to where they can win every ball game. And, and I think um, that goes no different whether it's game one or game ten. Uh, they want to know that they've walked in prepared uh, and starting off uh, on, on a good note. So, Coach, you talked about building the culture, a, a winning attitude there. Uh, were you surprised at all by the preseason ranking, the improvement from a year ago, uh, picked eighth this year in the RMAC? No, I'm not. Uh, and, and I'm not because we don't deserve any better. We were three and six last year. Yeah, we were in ball games and we were very competitive and all that. But you look up and down from t the – Who's picked number one, Carney? Carney all the way down to at the very last, and and, and uh, Coach Young. Shoot, I, I was there. They picked us last last year. So it's there's not a lot that separates one through ten right now, or one through nine, whatever it might be. And and um, you know, if everybody kind of remembers back in the in the mid 2000s when I was at Fort Lewis the first time, uh, we were picked dead last in 2004, middle of the conference in 2005, and then. Um, the year I left and ended up going to Kearney, uh, you know, Fort Lewis was ranked, picked first to win the conference. So they were two years away from that. So there's no reason why uh, right now we can't, uh, again, these rankings don't mean anything right now. And I say that because we're ranked, we're picked eight. Uh, maybe when we're picked first, I'll say they mean something. But, uh, but definitely right now, it only matters how we finish. And, and, and all our guys know that. Uh, they're not expecting anything different. Coach Air Force opened up football practice today. Obviously, Division One has more practice time than Division Two, but we're seeing the Ivy League go into, uh, I think, two days with, with pads and, mm -hmm. and no two-a-days. Do you see that as a trend in college football? I think the protecting the student athlete is the trend. And so whatever's in their best interest um, is, is more the direction that I see us going in the future, um, whether it's the helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact, protecting the kids against concussions, um, you know, we, we sat through the whole uh, hour and a half with the officials before we got started today about uh, what's a, a legal and illegal crack block and blocking below the waist. And again, it's all to pr protect the kids, and, and I'm all for it if it's in the good culture and, and, and nature of the, of the game. Um, for us, I know that if, if we can keep on being physical in the practices that we do have, um, that we're allowed to, to be full contact, then uh, it should be all right. I, I grew up, and I'm not that old, but I grew up in the whole, you know, two and three practices a day and every day, and you, it didn't matter how many hours in between practice you had. And we were just talking about that with coaches just a little bit earlier. And, and um, you know, we, I turned out okay. I, you know, I only lost a couple brain cells for too many hits of the head. But um, no, these guys, I, I'm all for it. I'm all for it if it means protecting them, but also want to make sure that uh, we always ensure that we're going to be a physical football team too.